Hey everyone, just wanted to give you a quick um, heads up that when we were recording this episode, um, we ended up having Joseph's Audacity crash, so the audio for both of us is going to be coming from an OBS recording, so the audio quality is probably going to be worse than normal. Um, sorry about that, but it should be better next episode. Thank you. off the reel. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, sure, start. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 29 of Pass Show, it's the Home Games Podcast. I'm Yazid and this is the man with a bottle of water with water in it, Joseph. That's me coming in very hot today. Uh, I'm the uh, Joseph, the date master. Today's May 10th, 2020. It is indeed May 10th. Um, may the tenth be with you. You know. May the uh, sure. Let's just say yeah to that. Uh, did you say what episode of this this is? Yeah, or what this? Okay. Passion of Homies podcast. I say it at the very beginning, man. I, I don't, don't know, dude. A I really science. don't pay attention. I got to... a relative science that I mess up approximately like seventy five percent of the time. Yeah, you you haven't been getting them one hundred percent the past few episodes, and that's all right, you know. It's a work in progress. <laughs> you think after like 29, I'd have a pretty good success rate, but honestly, like, it started better, and now it's just been getting progressively worse, but now it's getting better again, so I think that's a good sign. Yeah. You guys used to put more love and attention in your episodes, man. What happened? You sold out. I think it's the opposite of we sold out. We put less love and attention to our episodes. But the whole thing, if you, like, if you sell out, you like care about your thing less. No, I thought selling out just meant you're less genuine. Like, you're still talking about being poor, but you live in, like, a $10,000 mansion. Does that like mean that you care about your thing less? Not necessarily. I mean, you could still care about it. Like, I'm sure Metallica still cares about their music. It's just, you know, like, it's a little bit different now that they're, you know, older dudes who are hilariously wealthy than when they were just young kids. Like, oh, like coming out with, like, a brand new sound that no one had ever heard before, you know? I don't think it's like, I think it's legitimately just like a genuinity thing. Genuine, you mean, uh, uh, um, oh my God, there's a word for that. I don't think there so. Is, there is certainly a word. I want to say it's genuineness, and it's not. But it's something, g- genuinity. <laughs> genuinity. Genuinity. I think that's a fine word. Episode 29, genuinity. I'm going to write that down real quick. All right. Happy to have made my contribution. Yeah, I like that word a lot. I'm going to write that in my grave. Um, <laughs> real dark episode. Um, you ready to have home game stuff? Home game stuff. Yes, that's a yes, by the way. Yes. Yeah, I was, wait- I was waiting out the musical pause like you always say we should do that we never do. My timing on that is so bad. And I'm not even sure if the songs you used in the last one are even the same songs we always use. I don't know. I'm so I don't know how long. I think I, they are. You're probably right. You know, I don't yeah. even know. I'm going to be honest. While I was putting it together, I was like, I think this is the right song. But I don't remember. <laughs> but I also was like, I'm in too deep. I, I was just too late for me to go back and listen to the last episode to find out which song this was. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen uh, proper professionals. Producer. I've seen proper professionals do like timestamps, so they'll write in the thing like, "Oh, we started recording here at forty minutes in." Put the music for this, so you don't have to like. Because when I edit, I like go back and have to listen to us talk, and that super sucks. So I have to you know figure out the right point at which to put the thing. Yeah. So if we could avoid that by like planning, that'd be great. We but I don't literally know. only cause ourselves problems with more planning, if anything. No, that's not true. We've actually resolved a lot of problems because now we know what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we, we freestyle this thing every week and it doesn't go well. <laughs> Maybe applying more polish is actually the solution than less polish. Because see, the early days, we were we were listening to these like several times every time and then edit out for content and edit out for whatever. Sometimes I would even edit out like, I would go in like fine tooth comb type edit on some of the stuff. Where yeah. I would be like, oh, 
here I like coughed in the back. So I'm going to add a dampener, like a sound limiter here, but then I'm going to let the, it's like I'm trying to do crazy stuff. I just, yeah, just it'll let be it like, go. Oh, I tap my desk and you can hear it. So I got to like go through and like lower the sound everywhere to get that to not. Yeah. I don't do that anymore either. Yeah. It's like the only people. Yeah. No, no one, no one is when someone complains about that. We'll care. How about that? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my notes. Uh, unfortunately, life kind of got in the way of this week and I did nothing. I didn't have a chance to really do anything. Um, last week I did complain about Joseph not giving me collaborator status to the actual package. Uh, and he resolved that. So I will this week put out a new package for Squish. Like basically I'll do all the stuff I'm supposed to do this week. So put out a new package for Squish put out a PR with all the games updated and working and have unit tests for it and on the new Squish package um, that'll be out for review uh, this week, which should be nice. Cool. Yes. Um, yes. So <clears throat> uh, last week I was working on complex shapes and support for uh, polygons, essentially just polygons. But uh, a circle is not a polygon. So... My topic for the day is circles. Let's talk about it, Yazid. All right. So first of all, I want to point out that a circle has an infinite number of sides. So I think it could be considered a polygon. No. It has two sides, the inside and the outside. Maybe, maybe it is a polygon. I don't really know. Um, I'm pretty I'm not... sure it falls under the category of polygon because polygon it's... just means many sides. But I'm not 100% on that. We can Google it, but that would be against the nature of my geometry. Us. It's been a long time. Again, this is like the fifth time we reference this, but Yazid does have a math degree, everybody. But uh, <laughs> we don't know if a circle is a polygon. doesn't yeah. matter. Everybody understands that a circle is a circle. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit different. Is an oval a polygon is the question. Think think about what? That's a great question. Or an ellipse. Yeah, I, I would say. Has... Yeah, I don't know. In my opinion, it's not. <laughs> okay, continue. Sorry, talk about your circles. I don't know why I sidetracked this so much. No, no, no. I'm, uh, we're just talking about shapes at this point. Uh, so there's polygons, and then there's circles, and on a basic level that I can't really comprehend or describe or mathematically whatever, there is a difference between those two things. Something that has sides versus the thingies round. And the way that you say, for example, calculate the area of a polygon which is like, you know, taking the parts of it or whatever and adding them all up or yeah. integrals or something. Um, and I guess that's what you do with a circle as well. It's just pi is like a magic thing. I guess what I'm getting at is that pi is a magic thing for circles. And everybody knows that. There's like some magic component to like a radius and pi and a diameter, which is not typical polygon stuff. So um, was exploring circles uh, this past week, I guess, on a basic level... I brought to support polygons, lines, and circles mm -hmm. as, as all of our different types of things. And there's kind of different stuff that has to be done for each of them. Polygons are, for the most part, taken care of. Um, on my local branch, I have, like I said before, I had basic rectangles and stuff like that, uh, basic intersection, basic, all that kind of stuff. Excuse me. Uh, collisions and all that kind of stuff. Excuse me. Also found another one for uh, just kind of generic polygons that are not squares and rectangles. So I got collision and all that kind of stuff working. I can create kind of a crazy, you know, inverted V type thing. And that can collide whatever with other stuff and it mm -hmm. works and all that kind of stuff. Um, I spent like, no joke, like nine hours this past week sitting in the link because I'm moving all that kind of stuff. I moved. But this past week was sitting in a living room with like no furniture or and, and like sitting in a, a game room and just like whatever doing nothing. So um, I had a lot of time just sitting down when we weren't packing. And I spent nine hours looking into the canvas uh, draw arc or, or arc two and arc are the two methods I was looking into. And I want to have this interface for the shapes, which is just coordinates and kind of removing the specifics of how a, a specific a particular client renders that stuff. So, for example, if I say draw a line, maybe I just have to say that this is of type line, or maybe the type could be inferred from just the data itself. But it's um, it's a list of coordinates. If I say you know 
x, y. So it's like one, two, two, three, three, four. And it creates this line. Um, or I guess it'd be line. Uh, and maybe it's add the the first coordinate to the end, and that makes it a polygon. So that says to like close the line and become a polygon. But I guess it wouldn't work if it was a line. There's no way to close it at the end there, but the canvas would still let you do it. I, anyway, whatever. What I'm saying is a shape should be able to say just like, hey, point to point to point to point, and it, this is a circle or a line or a polygon, and have that be the entire interface. Um, and having all the magic and stuff handled by us. And the Arc and Arc 2 stuff, I got working. I can draw like a full circle with it uh, if the client, ju- or if the game just says like, give me a circle with this starting point. And then uh, from this starting point, you can either do a line or an arc to the next point. So if I say 1, 2, and then 2, 3, I can tell you, hey, either draw a straight line from 1, 2 to 2, 3, or do 1, 2 to 2, 3, and then do a little like arc based on the distance, and you determine the radius based on the distance, all this kind of Pythagorean-type mathematics going on in there. Um, so I have that working for the most part, the, the circle drawing. The, the difficulty, I guess, comes in with making all that stuff clean because you can you can do the intersection is this point within a circle but there's all just weird stuff like is a square within us like does a square intersect a circle well it's like how do you check you're like checking the perimeter or the the diameter or not the diameter it's like the perimeter of the circle right like the actual circle itself yeah. uh, against the rectangle but there's like weird things with edges and i don't know how you count like i don't know the math there i guess I don't know how it actually would work uh, with all these shapes interacting with each other, and does this collide with this, and can this thing hit and whatever? Like, there's a lot of complexity, I guess, that I'm adding with all these with all these different stuff on the client, all these different types of things that you can render. Yeah, because I was actually going to ask you about that because if you're adding like arcs to it as well, wouldn't we run into a problem where somebody builds like a polygon, like say, like take the inverted view for example, right? Which I'm going to assume is like on just listening to the thing I made a V with my fingers right uh, but if the inner point isn't two sides but instead one rounded side it's like can you do that so it's just like a weird one like because you can do that with arcs right where there is no hard edge anymore and it's just soft edges which means there is no longer any corners it's just a weird to just make a, thing you could make like a like yeah I guess you could be, yeah. It'd be like a collection of semicircles, yeah. right? Like weird things kind of like doing that to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that, I suppose. I don't I don't know what problems I'll run into there. I mean, I just, at this point, I have them rendering. I have polygons and circles rendering. And I can do the whole, again, can I click this? When I click this, attribute to click to the, the proper uh, game node because... It's a point within polygon, point within circle, not mm-hmm. polygon intersection with circle or polygon intersection with polygon. Um, lines, I think, should be easy. That's kind of, I'm, I'm saving that for last. Circles are really like all I'm focused on at the moment. Um, getting all this stuff to, to, yeah, first render. Then I'll do the the intersection and all that kind of stuff next week, probably. Um, and then come back with hopefully a finalized and good interface to do all of these shapes. Um, so you could do something like a weird rounded blah thing mm-hmm. um, based off of just coordinates. Uh, that's my goal, at least for now. Um, nice, man. That's going to be really cool. Uh, I do have one other question on there then. Is there nothing in the request animation, like the drawing tool to actually help with this? Like, does it not at all detect collisions between stuff, or what? It's all just, like, the the things that exist on the canvas are just shapes. It's like, this is a rectangle, this is a line, this is a thing. Like, I'm literally just giving it drawing instructions. Like, I'm saying, you know, start at point, line to point, line to point, line to point, and then line to the first point again, which ideally creates some sort of polygon, and then fill. So you're telling the canvas, like, the, the thing that you just drew, take that inner space and fill it with this color or whatever. But it doesn't, beyond it just painting that, it has no recognition of that, like, 
section of pixels is anything other than just some colored thing. It doesn't know, like, you know, because I guess it, it it would have to it would have to uh, implement all the kind of stuff that we're doing now, which is like, well, can they interact with this thing? Well, if they can, then add this to some sort of uh, index that we can check against, hopefully efficiently, of like what is clickable where, <clears throat> and then say, okay, well, you know these or clickable or inter interactable or whatever these things are interactable and their points intersect what do you want me to do and then you'd have to have like some sort of weird callback from the canvas of like two things that you've painted are touching what do you want me to do about that and it's mm -hmm. like do i do i have to store like on my side the id or the whatever of what's at that pixel that it told me something's intersecting at like it just seems like a weird um i guess and it doesn't seem like Maybe I'm wrong and this does actually exist, but I guess to me it seems like it would be like a, a responsibility that should be left up to the developer, not necessarily to the canvas or the browser. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just going to say, like, if because I wonder if there is something in there that kind of helps that and there is just a callback and then we could do a catch in the server, basically, like on in the game you have a place where you could catch for collisions given like two nodes or whatever. It is oh, fun though. Ton of collision. I mean, like the the idea of yes, that interface would be very nice. I also want to be the one that writes an interface. I think it'd be fun to do. Mm -hmm. Like having something that's super well abstracted like that would be would be really great to kind of take all this weirdness that we're doing, um, getting it going. But it feels like like building video games or whatever. You know, talking about like geometry and math and weird stuff with different shapes and is a circle a polygon or not or whatever type stuff. Like if you go and watch, um, excuse me, I think it's, I don't even know who does it. I want to say it's IGN, but it's, um, it's, it's like, no, 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 it's not. It's digital foundry. I think, uh, anyway, there's a series I've been watching recently. I forget what it is, but devs go and like talk through the tech of the games that they've made. Mm -hmm. It's like crash bandicoot. And the one I focus on was crash bandicoot, but I've watched another one. Um, I watched a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Anyway, it was just people talking about like, oh yeah, we ran into this and the way that like the PlayStation 1 handled memory was very tricky. So it had to read off of the CD and like blah, 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 all this different stuff. Um, and so kind of just hearing about the challenges that people had at a certain point, it's like, oh yeah, the math was hard or the memory was limited or the whatever. And it's just like, hell yeah, video games, you know, like complicated, weird math and banging your head against stuff to get the game to run like five frames per second faster it's like you're actually building games yeah i was gonna say also like i wonder if like unity or blender has uh anything on how they handle collision because i imagine that they have stuff too i mean it's all just math like the 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 y algorithms know, to do that are all out there for the most part oh okay i was gonna i didn't know if there was already an algorithm to handle stuff like this or not the I mean, like in my in my quick googling, I saw like the one I use for polygon intersection seems right. It's some fancy thing of like taking the sum of points of something and the distance of a line. Some crazy weird thing that someone did to figure out how to do this efficiently. Um, that stuff exists, I think, especially like Blender because that's all three D, right? So I'm mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's just a more complicated version of the same thing. Um, yeah. But there's like math to it, and like the your brain understands, like you like you know that there's some sort of thing that's happening there. We're like, oh, if you just took the thing and then the, you, you could see it, like there's math to describe the thing that your brain is saying, like, oh, you just see how this makes sense. Yeah. But like, I don't know it yet, so I guess I'm trying to I'm trying to get all that stuff working and, and abstract it away in a way that is like easily um, understandable when you actually do come to the abstraction and you see like, oh, this is how they're handling whatever circles in general whatever mm. but making it easy to like just make circles and not have to care yeah i was gonna say like it sounds almost like a weird instance of set theory where you have like a set of points that make up the shape both the external perimeter but also the internal and then you're just waiting for something to enter that set so mm. but there's no like good way of doing that because the uh, to build that set of points you'd need to like that's like almost like an infinite problem of like how do you figure out whether a point is inside of another? And you're basically just like solving the problem by taking that problem and applying it to itself. Of like how do you know if a point is inside of a shape? 
was the same way if you like that's just the collision problem all over again so you're saying it's like two different descriptions i guess of the same thing and you kind of need the same underlying solution but it kind of goes back and forth yeah exactly yeah, yeah. i mean at least for that set theory <laughs> example of like to figure out whether a point is in the set you'd need to know if it's colliding with like you'd need to know if the point is has collided into that shape basically you know I don't know. I don't know math like that. You know, <laughs> talking about talking about stuff that you would write papers on. Yeah, this is documents actually really cool. Yeah, yeah, documents, uh, a proof. You know, maybe not a paper anymore, <laughs> since I think set theory is pretty much nailed down. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, Matthew. That's why I'm describing math things in like the dumbest terms. <laughs> oh no, the circle needs to touch the the pointy part of a triangle, or whatever. <laughs> I see. I think actually like, touching uh, across edges is is probably way easier to figure out because you you know the lines that make or you know the arcs too that make up those shapes. It's my guess is that a lot of the math is if it's inside of the other shape, because then like if this thing is contained within the other thing, it wouldn't be touching the edge at all, which is what the actual arcs are made out of. You're, it's you're, it's what's contained with inside the lines or arcs. Yeah, and if I have arcs. I guess I would have to mark them specifically as something that's like internally to do different types of math. Yeah, I was actually going to suggest that of like maybe we track the type of shape it is, but I there don't is know a shape type. It's this. just sorry, go ahead. There, there's a there is a shape type. It's just um, I guess I haven't actually finished fleshing it out because I don't know why I need it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because if, if like like I said earlier, I could infer it like. My current thinking is, I think I mentioned this last week, but if I have my coordinate and it starts with 100, I'll abstract, I'll abstract this. But if it's more than 100, then you want to arc to it instead of align to it. So uh, then it's like, what are my types? Polygon and line? Well, then line is just a set of coordinates or a list of coordinates. <clears throat> And a polygon is also a list of coordinates, but add the first one last. Close it. It has to be a self, a closing a closed polygon. Mm -hmm. But what if you want a line that does that? What if I want a line from A to B to A, or A to B to C to A? But not. I don't want it closed. But it is closed. I'm closing it. You know what I mean? But it's not a polygon. It's a line. Is there a difference? I want you to know that what you said was A to B to C to A, which is this triangle, but I know right. what you mean, but yeah. So like a, really, you, you a triangle, a, like a shape that's an unclosed, like an unclosed shape. Yeah. For example, a triangle. If you if I say uh, a to b to c, a to b to c to a, I want it to be a closed polygon. Is that functional? Is that different from a to b to c to a as a line? Because it's a closed line. But what's a line versus a polygon? Like, is it? Do you care about the space in the center? We like what. What's the difference? I think, okay, so I think that there's two... Okay, so I think that there's... Okay, hold on a second. So just to differentiate, mathematically, a line is a set no, of... No, I... I, <laughs> I I'm, I'm asking... Your, your question of, like, closed versus open. So there is an example. We want a polygon where, the, where it's hollow on the inside, right? Is that what you're saying? Like, the ability to say, like, there's a polygon, but we don't care about the guts of the polygon. What we're looking for is just the external pieces of it. Like just the outer I'm, line. I'm saying in home games, if mm -hmm. someone says, "I want a shape," if I if I have no shape type, and I say I want a shape that goes from A to B, C in a line, and then goes back to A, and we infer that that is a polygon because it ends with the same coordinate that it started on. Is there any downside? because we can never really actually support a line that does that. Not necessarily in math, I'm asking in home games, like our actual, like thinking, I guess it's like a stupid whatever, because it's just a, a hypothetical. We could always add a type. I'm asking specifically about inferring the type instead of having to store mm. the type. How would you, and, and if you were to infer the type, the problem I would run into, I think, is that if I go with the solution that I'm thinking of, and if we do that, then we're limited to not allow a string that closes or a line that closes itself. So, 
personally, I think it's easier for us to have the shape type defined than to infer it because at the check collision needs to run frequently and so constantly having to figure out like is this an arc is this a shape is this a close sorry is this an arc is it a closed shape is it an open shape is it just a straight line like what is going on with this thing that takes computational time and since this is a node server which is something we've talked about before where it's a single threaded process so it's going to take like the more time we ask it to take to infer and then also to do the collision check that's going to start to add up when you have multiple nodes like basically i think would be shrinking the total number of nodes that you can allow on the screen at any given enough time by doing the inference every time but i don't know about how much like like computers do math very fast and 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 like a, a simple equality check of the last coordinate to the first coordinate is very fast the ability to check is because the like is an arc is just is it over 100 mm -hmm. which i guess it's like almost instant like I understand they'll add up. I guess I just don't know if the thing that's adding up in the check, the check collisions is the inference of the type or if it's the actual collision checking itself or the fact that you have to iterate through everything on the screen and that just increases linearly. Like, you know, I, I don't know what the bottleneck mm, there is. Yeah, I don't know. I think that the check... We, well, we know with that at some point there is going to be like, so we know like right now there's a theoretical limit on how many nodes you can have on the screen. Right. Necessarily, I mean, like, whatever the max buffer size is in, in JavaScript. Right. Okay. So, so like, okay, so that's the, that's the theoretical maximum, right? But then adding computational time gives us a high, like, a functional maximum, just bigger, like, we want it to be snappy in the right because I don't know I, I just think that the and the inference is just going to slow it down a little bit but I don't know how much because you're right about it doing math but like say you had I don't know a thousand shapes right which is made up of like I don't know right like if that's x number of coordinate pairs to like build out whether it's what shape it's made out of because somebody could get really complicated and do like here's my node and it's made up of like zero zero to one one to one two to two one like you know what i mean like to like really like micromanage how the shape is shaped to get like a really closely cut um like hitbox for example and that's gonna right it's like a shape that that's complicated we're gonna have to check all of those edges now to build whatever that is and so i think we're gonna run into a problem of like the, the, the tighter we build the hitbox, the more complicated that inference becomes to make. The type inference would only happen once per shape. So no matter how complicated someone makes their polygon, we're only figuring out if it's a line or a polygon once. And then for the arc stuff, that is per coordinate. But we're, we're going to have to go per coordinate for collisions anyway, I think. So I guess I'm saying if, if I have a thousand things on the screen... And it, it seems, I feel like I'm arguing against adding a type. I guess I am. I guess I just don't. This is this is more of like an argument about uh, uh, the shapes and kind of stuff. I don't really care so much about the shape type. We can add it or not. I don't really care. Um, but if, if something takes a second or five seconds to render because there's a thousand shapes on the screen, I would bet that the problem is not the type inference. That I would bet that that takes maybe less than half a millisecond in total for a thousand things. That's a thousand comparisons of the first and the last. Like yes, that's that's too many. But the I guess the problem is there's a thousand, and we have to do this inherently expensive operation on a thousand things. Yeah, I don't know. I I I think maybe we, that's one of those things that we're gonna just have to test and see how it goes. You know. Like, yeah, we'll just do it and see if it's if there's like a significant hit to us, and then go from there. It's also very fast to just add them. I might just add them. I guess. I, I guess my real question is: Do we care if something is a line or a polygon? Is home games going to react differently? But if if can someone say fill a line? Yeah. So the, see, that's the that's my that was my question earlier. Because if we're going to allow hollow shapes, then yeah, we do need to know. But 
if we're not going to allow hollow shapes. Like, basically, if you build a closed circuit, it's closed for all intents and purposes. But, no, I mean, like, a, a, you say hollow, that's just a shape with no fill. Because right. everything is just lines. Right. But, yeah, you I mean, can... like, could, to, cause, but to check collision against, that's different. Oh, you're asking if about aside from rendering if it actually has no guts in it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we support that because you'd have to have a. How do you have a? You'd have to have a separate list. It'd be like in yeah, GeoJSON. So that's, that's what I was confused about earlier. I was like, I don't know how that's gonna work. But like, that's the question: is do we all support hollow or non-hollow? Because if we support both of those, this becomes really complicated. That's a thing in geometry data. It's called a multi-polygon. So you have a, a polygon, which is a polygon, and a multi-polygon, which is a list of polygons where you can have more complicated stuff like a nested type of thing like that to make something crazy. It It's a list of lists, and that's not super more complicated, but it adds complexity, and I just don't want to add it. Mm -hmm. So let's not do that. Okay. If, if, it, if, if a shape exists, that shape exists in its entirety, whatever, and if it isn't rendered with a fill, it still exists there. Mm -hmm. I guess then my question would be like, <clears throat> sorry, when you're saying like a line, right? Where it's, a, it's for example, like we go from like, okay, so let's take just a corner of a rectangle. So an unclosed rectangle, for example, or three of the four sides of a rectangle, right? That's three lines put together, correct? If I take... Yeah, so just imagine a rectangle and remove one of the sides. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, but it's not. Okay. Okay. That shape is effectively three lines put together, or how would we def how is that defined, for example? That'd be an error. It's nothing. It's an error. Oh, 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 oh. It's a line still. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a line. Okay, so it is a line. Um, how is that function in terms of the rendering? So for rendering purposes, it is just going to render the three lines together with edges and corners, correct? Yeah, it's just going to draw three lines. The 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 canvas specifically will handle that in a certain way, but I don't know how to generically handle... Like, again, I'm, I'm trying to not tie stuff directly to the canvas, but for this specific thing, drawing a, can, or drawing a line and drawing a polygon are really this, the exact same operation. Mm -hmm. It's literally started a path and moved to a path. It's just how, how far does that path go? And then... In home games, you can add a fill and a border to things. Yes. Like so, but but like so. I guess the real question and the only real difference is: Can someone add? <gasps> that sounded like a comic book punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yazid's headphones fell off of his head. She pulled my headset off my head. I wasn't giving enough for love. You're a good girl. Thank you. Um, sorry. I may the only difference, that. the only difference is that in home games you can add a border and a fill. The mm -hmm. only difference is that I don't think supporting a fill on a line makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So if we can say that we don't support a fill on a line then we would have to add a type or I guess we could infer the type, but it feels weird to have a restriction on something that we don't actually tell somebody exists. And then, uh, uh, I, I guess, I guess I don't think we need types is my, is my like summary. Okay. Because, because if we just say, yeah, you put a, you put a fill, but your thing is a line, your thing never closes. So there's nothing to fill. That just makes sense to me. Like, Beyond all this other stuff, you said go to A, B, C, and fill it. There's nothing to fill. It's an open thing, and whatever. Mm -hmm. Like we're it just you're just not going to do that. I don't think that needs to be an error, and I don't think that we need to have like super crazy handling, whatever. I think trying to keep the drawing drawing instructions super simple is just yeah lines and arcs, and go until you tell me I can't. Okay. I mean, you're the one making it. I, I I was just asking questions. I have no idea. No, yeah. I, what what do you think of the interface? I mean, I think that that's a pretty good idea. I think that if we need something more complicated or bulky, then this is a good starting spot.
anyway. So, I mean, I think this is a good place to start whether or not we need something more. Um, yeah. But we are, like, because this is the least, like, this is the least overhead for us to do anyway. Yeah. So, um, I think it's also, er, earlier we mentioned 3D stuff, and with my new game node kind of abstraction stuff, I have officially added a coordinates 2D property to the game node class, which, of course, leaves the option in the future for a coordinates 3D, but we're not there yet. <laughs> hey, boy. That's going to be pretty sick. How does That'll be like canvas okay. rendered in three dimensions? I think you just give it a Z. You can say, like, fill rect, and then just give it a Z. But there's... You, I think there's a... You, there's, like... Uh, you know, you get like get context or whatever, and it's two D on ours. Yeah, pretty sure you could just get three D and then just paint Z's. It's a different. Amazing technology's really come <laughs> along. <laughs> I'm fairly sure that's the thing. I, I don't know a hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure that's the way three D works in Canvas is. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was my thing for this week for home game stuff. It's just that I've been trying to figure out circles and shapes and making everything uh, abstractly. Be nice. Nice. Um, yeah. One of the things that we did want to discuss from last week into this week was integrations and specifically a Spotify integration. Um, so I guess first my question isn't specifically about Spotify. It's more about integrating. So what do you think is the... If, for example, somebody made a game, non-you and me, and they wanted to integrate with a third party, right? What kind of restrictions would we have on that? I guess that's like my first point. So would we restrict integrating for other people? Wait, integrating, you mean like, can you, can you give an example? Yeah, it's like, for example, I'm making a, I don't know. Uh, um, oh, okay, here's an example. Do you remember like a while ago there was that geolocations game where you just get a random set of coordinates off Google Maps. And so you just get like a random image of a street on Google Maps and you'd have to try to find that coordinate, um, like find like what city or state that was in, like where that picture I was taken. did not know about that, but okay. that sounds cool. But it, 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 Google it, Maps it, integration. Yeah, like a Google Maps integration, for example, where you just pull up a random set of, a random, I don't know, like street level view of your city yeah. and be like, do you know this intersection? And so it's just like a, a guessing game of like who knows the city the best, for example. That's actually a really good idea for a game. That'd be cool. Um. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can do that at all, but I think that'd be a pretty sick game to play with like a bunch of people. Yeah, it would be fun. I uh, I guess, I don't know. I, from my perspective, I would like to have integrations like that. It would be cool. I don't want to add SDKs to our build process. And... Uh, I don't want to violate other people's terms of service, which I don't even want to read Google Maps terms of service, but according to them, I've read it and I agree to their search, whatever. But like, I don't actually want to agree to it or read, read it, I mean. So like, oh, integrating with a third party, they can't store or access this data, this, whatever. Like, I don't, I don't like dealing with that stuff and I really don't want to deal with abiding like by some weirdo you know the year is 2024 google updated their api terms of service to require this of all their integrations i'm gonna go out to update someone's thing or my thing for their their api integration to go meet these new standards or whatever just the opportunity that, that or the ability that, that can happen i really don't like so mm -hmm. i guess integrating with things that are not us that we don't control is like iffy to me but i'm not opposed to it i just do you think if it goes on like a game by game basis and home games proper never does an integration like that? So if for example somebody does change okay, so for example, like somebody used the Google Maps integration, Google Maps changes the way that you integrate to them, that game is now completely broken, doesn't work. Right? And that that doesn't affect home games proper, it affects that game though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I don't know how if it's like what is the integration? If we have to add some sort of thing to our package.json, for example, I'm already like super opposed. But if for some reason 
I say, ah, that's actually fine and we should support that. Or we say that whatever, we, we should support that. And it's like, okay, well, Google Maps API is now part of uh, the home games package.json. So every time that you have home, home games installed, whatever, in any way, you have to install all this Google stuff or this Facebook stuff, this bleh, stuff. And uh, that's now like part of our code, which means, you know, we have like a versioned thing of it available in all of our JavaScript. So if someone is like somehow convinced Joseph and UZ to integrate with Facebook's, you know, new whatever API, now it's part of package.json. That exists for everybody who works on home games. So, so every time that thing changes, everybody who depends on it is affected. If it's something simple like basic HTTP calls, but again, I don't know how that works. Like we talked about last week with Spotify stuff. I don't. I have actually no idea how we would do a third-party integration with just pure HTTP without SSL stuff. I don't know if the people allow that or what. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But if someone's doing that, then it's more of a case-by-case -case basis because it's like, yeah, I set up this thing to make a GET request to this URL, and technically that's an integration. But if we have to have an actual like code dependency. It's more manageable for sure. It, I think I'm just opposed to it. Taking a step back, it seems like I'm opposed to integrations, which I might be. <laughs> I think we need like a, I think we need like a, a proof of concept. I think that Spotify thing we talked about last week would be really cool. And if I, we had that working, I would be would be super down for that. I actually thought of another. <laughs> I don't know why when we're on this podcast, like I just think of hilariously fun games that I would want to play with my friends, but. Uh, it you all log into instagram and it it'll pick a random person and it'll pick a random photo from something that they have posted and everybody but that person gets it and they need to guess whose picture that is and then you get a point if you get it right got, got it but then we're and, uh, with insta yeah which is facebook which but is facebook. uh yeah that would be fun i don't know i think that's exactly the kind of game that people would actually want to play mm. Which is like, okay, you know, you, you, on one hand, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe people will get this crowd of, like, tech nerds who are also social, and they want to go and, in their free time, pick up JavaScript and build interesting games and then play them with their friends. That person probably exists, but I don't think there's a lot of that person. I would guess that the average person who just wants to download home games and play it is someone who would want to play, like, an Instagram match your picture game or whatever, because that's what people want. Yeah, buddy. Or... Another, I'm idea. People. <laughs> Another idea for a game. We do the Google Maps thing. We use your Google Maps history of places you've been to. And we, we, we put that out there. And then you got to pick to see who was the most recent person to be at that location. We go from there. So it's like, who has most recently been at the Safeway? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I kind of I kinda like that. It'd like be embarrassing. You'd, yeah, you'd be like, right? Like, you, you get, like, a, a set of shared places that everyone has been to, and then you just put it out there, then everyone has to guess on, like, who was the most recent person to have been there. Or you can take the, I guess, inverse of that, which is everything that only one person has been to. You just show everybody's weird interests, and it's like, who went to the <laughs> adult film shop or whatever? <laughs> AdamandEve.com. Who went there, yeah? <laughs> that would actually be pretty sick. Why? Are, there's a lot of actually weirdly fun games I think would be neat to do, but they require an integration like that. And also, I think that that actually is a, a behind a paywall for Google Maps, like how you integrate with Google Maps in that way. I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure on that. I'm not 100%, though. Would, uh, yeah, I think there is. Um, it's actually a really great uh, question because if you think about like okay, if you want if you want home games to be like a uh, like a board game replacement or a card game replacement for people, um, a lot of the draw that comes from like using the technological thing for people is the social media aspect of it, and so if it's like okay, well yeah, let's play a board game. Oh, this is like Risk, but it's on my phone. Ah. But if it's like, oh, it's the game of life, but it takes like our actual Facebook stories or something, then it's like, oh, wow, you know, it's like the integration is kind of a lot of the, the value. Mm -hmm. um, but I hate everything about actually doing it. <laughs> it's kind of a... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I mean, listen, I understand your point on this. And it, most integrations that we do are probably going to require us to add something to our package.json. Most of them. If nothing else, we'd probably have to add like a rec- like something or like a go between. What is a go between? Like all instances of home games pass through an HTTPS certified end like endpoint that I actually can get to those sites and integrate properly. Okay, then maybe that's like the thing that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Because if we have to have some sort of service running on our side, like I want this all to be as free and hippie and whatever as possible. But if I'm paying a direct cost for something as a result of people playing games, that like needs to be paid for. Like I can't just pay everything. So uh, maybe that's like a premium thing, where it's like, oh yeah, you get home games if you want integrations, meaning you can talk to the Facebook and Google and blah 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 API. Mm-hmm. Five bucks a month or something. I don't know. I have I have no idea. I keep in mind I would be embarrassed to charge somebody money for this for the next like three years at least. So that's way way down the future, like in down the line. But in a in a world where that does exist, like if there's a cost of us maintaining some sort of centralized thing that everything integrates with, then we got to maintain that, which is money. But uh. Whatever, we'll figure that out. But I think that's an interesting thing. I think that's actually, a, like like you said, it, it's a, it's what people want. It's There's what people a lot want. of games like, in there. Yeah. I have a game. All right, listen. I'm, oh, God dang it, dude. Okay, first <laughs> things first, I got to finish this Node.js. Sorry, this NPM update. Okay, this package update. Then I got to update Square. Then I got to make fast typer in the West. And then I have an idea for an integration based game that I will try to make. It is who tweeted that. And it just uh. is <laughs> from someone you log in to Twitter or you give me your username. We pull in like, I don't know, like 30 tweets from each person randomly selected. Everyone gets it. Who tweeted that? And you got to guess. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I actually really liked it. Yeah, I'd be pretty sick. Like, can you imagine like sitting down with your friends and be like, all right, I don't know. This went to sense. Uh, used to selling that loud outside the trap. Who tweeted that? And it's like, that's, that's a lot of it's No oh. doubt that's <laughs> Um Yeah, no, man. I don't know. I think there's a lot of interesting games we could make with integrations and I think that at some point we need to figure out how to do them in a way that either doesn't cost us money while still falling terms of service or a way to maybe like offset the cost of it. Because I think that ultimately people want to play games that are fun and silly when they're around other people. Like I don't think, I don't know. I guess to me, home games has always been like, I'm with friends in like a location and we want to play a game together and, and normally we're like a silly bunch and like we're goofing around and stuff like that so I would want to play games that kind of like em- like bring that out like more silly more goofy who tweeted that was is like the epitome of that because sometimes the things yes, yeah. like are just so wild and out there yeah that's true that's a great example of something that we should actually build because it's not even beyond the integration that's not hard to build you know no yeah but um i can see a lot of people really enjoying that game too yeah like, like pretty much anyone who uses twitter semi-regularly would enjoy playing that game with friends if they have friends i think i think there's a lot that we would have to get going i think we would need a, a proof of concept before we can like really start to say if we could or not mm-hmm. uh, that's what i was saying like this that game would be like our proof of concept because if we can do that while following terms of service and everything then i think we're okay but then there's also this other thing of if we are the kind of centralized organization that is getting approval from twitter to say that like yeah we are this domain and we're sending requests from this and to you and token authentic whatever API integration stuff. We are now 
the one making like the agreement with these companies, meaning that we're responsible for it. Like if someone breaks the terms of service through the actual usage of something with the dependency and it like slips by, then we are responsible. Yeah. I think that we couldn't, I think that what we would need to do is write like, like an internal API basically to hit external services. If that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know anything. I, oh, but because we, it would still be the, the 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 access to the API would still be given to us home games, and yes. every API every request is made through our thing, which means that everything that a player does with the API is our fault. So if they go and they post like death threats or whatever through some game somehow, it's like, well, they broke it through your API, but it's like well, I don't know. I don't I, again. I wonder if I don't know. That's home Games legal team. Uh, we're taking applications. Uh, Joseph at homegames.io. <laughs> uh, just tweeted at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the Home Games lawyer. I got the job through Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the pay is nothing. There's no benefits, and you're not actually an employee. Uh, taking all applications. Just like all of us. <laughs> all two of us. Yeah. Um, but that is, is an interesting topic. And I do think we will need to do at least a little bit of digging on it and see what we can and can't do. Realistically, I think that the things that we've talked about wanting to do, if we were to just stop right now with the new ideas, we'd probably be working on all this stuff for the rest of the year still. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I just, at a certain point, we got to cut it off. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess I have so much to catch up on with all these like little changes I've made in my PR, and then you still have your game that you got to put put out, and then we have. I mean, Square is out there, but I did some updates and some cleanup that I wanted to do, just like some hot fixes and stuff, like a patch. Yeah. It's a patch to to there. Now, I won't release patch notes for it, so you'll never know what I changed. But that's just even that's the whole thing, like patches and patch notes. You have to actually implement patch notes in home games. Yeah. Very meta, but well, there's just like, so much work that. to do. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff to do. No, no, oh yeah, we did. It was, but that was like a list. That was like a list of things. Whatever. I'm talking about the actual uh, rendering. Like we would, we would have to have some sort of home games wide way of saying, "Here's a game, and here's the most recent update," pulling from whatever the standard way that we store that is. But like. Mm-hmm. The home games update, the new version 420 of Square. Nice. Like, we have to actually render all that stuff. Yeah, buddy. And that's just more work. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, the home games, oh, the home button consistency, that's just more work. Oh, getting music to work correctly, that's just more work. It's just like, damn, you know? Yeah. It sounds like really <laughs> what we want is like uh, four, I would say we need like four teams. We need like, one team of people who's like R and D, and they'd be the ones in charge of figuring out how the integrations work and how to do the shapes. Team two yeah. would be the uh, like dashboard. Team three would be the web side of it, and then team four would just be maintaining games. And then you have a fifth team which just reviews incoming game pull requests. <laughs> oh God! It's like you rank them from best to worst. I would yeah. love to be on the R and D team there, but a hundred percent, I rated them from best to worst. That's what I was thinking about. Like you, you're like, okay, like my first job, you start in the review team, and if you show promise, then you move on to the next team until you finally get to R and D. It's like working in the the home games code dumpster for like two years. Gulags. You start as. You, you, I don't even, I don't know a demeaning Russian name, but you end up as uh, Pietrov in in the R and D team. There you, go. there you go. I don't know why I went with that example. I don't know much about Russian history. Um, Me you neither. Know. You could say literally anything, and I'll believe you. Uh, no, that was it for home game stuff. Uh, fun fact: uh, Stalingrad has been renamed three times. Really? Yeah, it got renamed from its original name to Stalingrad and then away from Stalingrad. So, so three times it was named. What's it named right now? Not Stalingrad, I can tell you that. 
<laughs> Definitely not called Stalingrad. <laughs> That's a cliffhanger. Tune in next week. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not going to look that up. I should. Uh, That's the responsible host would look that up and share that information. I'm an irresponsible host whose dog ripped their headset off their head mid conversation. Um, it's all good. You ready to move on to what's up? Uh, yes. What's up? What's up? What's happening? Um, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, I'm moving still. So, uh, moved from Seattle to Tucson. Sonovia and I packed all of our stuff over the past week into my Corolla and uh, our UPAC containers because pods are expensive. I tell people that we get pods or that we got pods because the name recognition, but we actually got UPAC containers for 66% of the price. It's like the when you when you get a Lyft, you tell someone you got an Uber just because it's easier, you know. I do anyway. the opposite actually. No. Really? <laughs> I I, should, I always just say I use Lyft. I don't use Uber. I also don't use Uber. Anyway, I tell people I get Ubers because I don't get Ubers. But Uber is the word for anyway. Uh, it's like if you use Bing and you tell people you Google stuff to not get embarrassed. So we got we got pods basically, and we got uh, uh, we have a Corolla that we use to like basically all the stuff that we need to have here with us because uh, you know the world fell apart. We were gonna buy a house, so I'm li- I'm staying with my mom now, temporarily. So maybe staying with her parents. Um, and so basically, we just had to get the things that we need for the immediate, like right now. So, because our lease is up at the apartment and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, we just got all of our stuff and put it into the car. And it's everything that we're going to have to to need, like immediately. And then all of our containers and stuff are going to get here next week. So, uh, we spent the whole week packing stuff into boxes and then putting those boxes into larger boxes. And then, those boxes are currently in Oregon. And then Saturday morning, which is yesterday morning, at 7.45, we left Seattle and uh, did the same thing as last time. We parked in that that family friend's driveway in San Ramon, California, and slept. And uh, that was for like four hours, but sleeping and like there was a seatbelt like lodged in the side of my head as I tried to lay down, so I couldn't really sleep. So I got like two hours of sleep. And then I drove the rest of the way there, here, uh, earlier. So that's a 26-hour drive, and I'm dead. Sonovia offered many times. She argued. She really wanted to drive. I wanted to be a big, strong man and do the whole drive myself because I'm an idiot. And so I did. And I remained an idiot. But it was a fun drive, and I'm exhausted. I got two hours of sleep last night. And, yeah, I drove 13 hours, two days in a row. And I'm now here doing this. And this room behind me is a mess. You can't see, thank goodness. I'm on my MacBook recording with my real mic because uh, I packed everything except my webcam. That's in a box in Oregon. Um, But I had everything else. So I need a whole separate computer because of my lack of planning yet again. Well, you look handsome as always. I feel like garbage. Thank Um. you. (laughs) Um, I have uh, a question for you. What are you going to be most sad about? Um, after, like, what are you going to miss the most about Seattle? I do really like the weather for the most part. Like the summertime here is miserable. The summertime in Seattle is also not great because no one has AC there. So, like inside of my apartment, it would be you know you could be like eighty degrees or whatever. And it's like seventy eight outside. And there's, like, no moving air. All that stuff really sucks. But beyond that, the, the weather's great. Um, being around water is nice. It's, like, beautiful pop. Like, you know, people visit from, like, around the world to see some of the places in Seattle. The tourist attractions and like, but just some of the stuff that's there. Like, the, the look of certain things. Like, I would just walk by Pike Place in the morning sometimes and be, like, amazed at the way that thing looks with the lights in the morning when it like catches whatever. And then there's, there's a, the water all behind it. It's like, I live here, you know, it's crazy. Uh, so that stuff I'll miss being like taken aback by how cool certain things look, but like coming back here, I think I gained an appreciation for like just mountains growing up here. It was always like, yeah, you're surrounded by mountains and it's a hundred degrees outside. That's just the way it is. 
<laughs> but then when you leave this part of the country or the part of the world, then you realize that that's not the way it is for everybody. It's like, oh, Tucson's actually awesome. Like, like Tucson sunsets are awesome. Tucson mountains, like they're gorgeous. Like this whole place is so nice, and uh, you don't like really notice that until you are living in it every day. So there's there's pros and cons, you know. And uh, I'll be traveling back to Seattle every now and then for work, so I'll get like the best version of it, of just seeing it every now and then, um, you know, just to see the best parts of it, I guess, and not have to like be there, stuck on Mercer or anything else. I hate I hate traffic in Seattle so much. It's like the only thing I can think of when I think about the bad things about Seattle. But yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was just curious, uh, like what you'd miss the most. Um, is there a restaurant, like, what was your favorite restaurant in Seattle? I can ask you these questions now because it's, like, out of the bag and you've actually left, so I feel like these are... Yeah. Yeah, this, this is... It's a, it's sad, too, because well, we were there this past, you know, couple weeks, and it, we kind of wanted... From the beginning of this year, we wanted to do this thing of... We had a list of every place we wanted to go to and all these different restaurants we would try, and kind of every week we'd have a different date night and go experience something new. Uh, we did that for about a month. And then it kind of fell off for a few weeks and then the world ended seemingly. So everything kind of fell apart there. We didn't really get to experience the rest of that list. But my two favorite restaurants are actually right next to each other, kind of. Uh, one of them is a bar slash restaurant where you, like, the main thing is not the food. It's called Five Point Cafe. Mm-hmm. Other thing is Bambino's. They have, like, they have the best pizza in Seattle. I don't care about Pagliacci. It's not that great. And I don't care about whatever else. Bambino's is the best pizza in Seattle. Uh, everyone who works there is super nice. And they have a uh, good everything. So my coworker almost died from eating one of their calzones because he ate the whole thing. And I've never seen anyone so close to death. He was sweating after the meal. It was that good. Anyway, uh, Bambino's and Five Point. <laughs> you know a meal is good when your body is like evacuate all water. Just get it all out. Everything. Just, just make more out. room. <laughs> what kind of make more room, dude? <laughs> Kidney functionality is not the prime, like not the priority right now. It's like fine dining and breathing. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice man. I'm very happy that you're gonna be back in the dirty tea. I am so happy to be home, dude. I love Tucson. Like, 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 life has been so crazy stressful for the past four years for a lot of reasons, but a lot of it I attribute to, to living in Seattle kind of unfairly because I moved out there and kind of like became an adult out there. So I tie a lot of my like first time paying rent first time, like doing a lot of things that an adult does like growing up or whatever. And then all the stress that comes with that first time, having like a real job and then, you know, tying all of like those horrible memories. I tell everybody all the time that I know my like previous, previous job, I was, like first month of living in Seattle, I was crying, eating scrambled eggs, standing in my kitchen during my lunch break. I was like, oh my God, that place is awesome. And I have a lot of negative stuff in my head associated with it, but Seattle's great. But I'm so happy to be back to Tucson. Like I love being home. I love being around my family. I love being able to see, like we drove through Phoenix earlier because we were coming back through I-10 and I was like, holy shit. Tynan is here. Like, Tynan, our friend Tynan, lives in Phoenix. Like, I'm around him right now. That's crazy. I'm so used to being in the middle of, like, nowhere compared to all of our friends. We have one other friend who lives in Seattle um, that we knew from before. But you know this person. Anyway, um, we, we don't, like, don't have a lot of friends out there. Actually, there's two people that live in Seattle that you know. But um, it's weird, like, not being isolated from all these people that you can still talk to. You know, like, I have a hundred thousand different ways I can talk to you at any second of any day, but I can't see you in real life. And at the moment I really can't either, but like take that part away. Like we're in the same place now. You know what I mean? Like I could yeah. see my friends. We're like 45 minutes apart right now. It's one. Yeah. You still live way too far from I mean, me. I do. I live very far away from you, but like, you know, once all this like settles down, we can go and like get food or something, you know, equidistance away <sighs> from each other. It's the idea of like going somewhere that sounds so nice it's like friends the idea Imagine of going it's... somewhere does sound really nice right now just throwing it out there i've been yeah. stuck not going anywhere <laughs> it's crazy i was also like amazed at all the traffic you would think that you know like i mentioned this on the way up 
that the traffic was kind of like surprising in California because there were a lot of people. But we came back, we got stuck in a traffic jam in Phoenix. It's just, what are you guys doing? You know, like, who's out? I get, I'm out. What are you guys doing? (laughs) (laughs) I actually have a theory on this. So my theory is that Tucson has abnormally high traffic still because the snowbirds are stuck here. Tucson seems fine when I was driving around earlier. earlier Uh, It's way worse than it normally is around this time of year, dude. Come on. Maybe I'm like... You're used to not this driving anymore, but like around this time of year, snowbirds are like, it's too hot, and they leave, and it's like, it is too hot. Normal humans shouldn't live here, but we do. All right, we live here when it's like, ah, it's hot enough to cook eggs on rocks, and you're just like, don't go outside when it's bright out, and you're just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's so hot. If you walk your dog, they can die. And you're just like, yeah, that's normal. Uh huh, 100%. It's like, yeah. that's just knowledge. Yeah, that's obviously, yeah, don't go out in the sun, dummy. It's like, <laughs> you that thing will kill you. In the morning or you go out real late in the evening when it's not blazing hot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Says so my yeah, I mean, the snowbirds are stuck here. It's I think. Stars. I've never noticed this, like those people outside of like once the gem show ends, it's basically done. They're just you know. No, yeah, but see, that's the problem is that the gem show was during the start of this, so I think that they had, they were here during the gem show, and they just got stuck because they couldn't fly out anymore, and now they're just yeah. here, semi permanently. I saw the weirdest thing. Speaking of people coming here, not living here, whatever. We were in. California, we were in Los Angeles and we were leaving like we were heading uh, east from there and I saw a sign for the Pima Air and Space Museum near LA and it like broke my brain because it was like you mean the little like it's not little, it's, it's actually kind of cool but like I know where that is. Hell of a drive from LA. Yeah, who, who decides to see a billboard and just drive seven hours to go see a P, like the Air and Space Museum. Why is P Air and Space Museum paying for that ad space? What is going on there? It's so weird. That's very funny. See, yeah. that's like the opposite of the like normal roadside signs where they're just like, come see the thing or whatever. <laughs> and, and, right? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, I wonder what the thing is. So then you go and it's like right there, but it's like, it's never what you think it's going to be. The Pima Air and Space Museum tells you exactly what it is, but it's also hella far away. So you know what you're getting into. It's just going to take you a hundred days to like get there. Yeah. Well, the thing has the mystery of it's the thing. Yeah. So you'll drive an hour and a half out of your way to go see this thing. Sonovia told me you have to pay to see it. Yeah. That's how they make their money, dude. But like, isn't it just like a dead animal? So I have, I've never gone to see the thing, but from a semi-reliable source, it used to be a bear that's since passed away. And now it's just like a taxidermy bear with like a duck bill on it or something. Third is that. Someone glued together two stuffed animals it is and then put thing. up a billboard sign to go check it out. Yeah, uh-huh. I, well, I think the billboards have been up since it was an actual bear. But, like, can you imagine, like, going to see this thing and it's just a bear? And you're just like, I know what a bear is. Also, I wonder what condition that bear was living in. Just going to throw that out there. Brown bears don't typically do well when it's 110. Maybe that dude, maybe it was imported, you know, from a, from another place. It died peacefully in Canada or whatever. No, it was alive at one point and was still labeled as the thing. So at one point, the thing used to be you'd go in and see a live bear. And then the bear passed away and then then the duck thing happened. And now it's just a bear duck dead thing. That is one of the worst things I've heard in a while. (laughs) That's really awful. It's (laughs) semi-reliable. I'm not going to out my source because I've never been. So this is like second or third hand accounts of, of what the thing actually is. You're funded by Big Thing, dude. You're just trying to gain hype. <laughs> You're trying to make people go see it. God, can you imagine hiring me to be part of your PR team? That's like the worst. <laughs> that is the worst idea I've ever heard. Speaking uh, of uh, joining someone's PR team, um, shout out to my mom. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, happy, happy Mother's Day. Day. 
to all mothers, except it's late by the time people are seeing this, so sharing this. Oh, yeah, you're mothers. right. <clears throat> Dang it. Next year, Happy Mother's Day 2021. Watch this on that day next year. Don't. Watch the next, the most recent episode. It cannot possibly be worse than this one. <laughs> okay. you know, watch episode 81. You know, patch yeah. Did you just God. do that math right now on the spot? I think so. I don't know if it's correct. But yeah, if, if my math is correct, which again, probably not, in a year from now, we'll be doing episode 81 of this. Your math That's is wrong. Nuts. No, your math is right. You're right. It is 81. 52, 52 and 29, bro. Hell yeah. Yeah. Good job. I'm proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Like, already at 29, it's one of those things where you're just like, really? We've done 29 of these? It's just weird. I don't know. Yeah. It's become a normal part of, like, my life at this point. It kind of has. I like it. I think, yeah. you know what? One day, we should do an episode where we compare, like, um, like six months ago, home games to to re- the current home games. The actual like code, or not do like not do like a code, game, one, I mean, but it... do like start like the functionality differences. Like be like, oh, like he like six months ago, like this like we oh, like quarterly maybe like once every three months would be like, oh, like check this out. Like there's all the stuff that was done over this last three months. What well, to me the the kind of developer update is that I don't know how we see the video content stuff going forward but like because mm. there, there's there's the podcast obviously excuse me there could be uh developer updates which is like broad changes since the last one underlying technical things that we can do or specific kind of showcases or whatever and then um more specific focus like game updates like here is a game here is square here's whatever here's how it works for any kind of individual to just make a game and make a video about it if they want to, um, or whatever. <sighs> but um, I guess because th- my thinking there is that running the actual code from six months ago is hard. Like the dependencies will will update and stuff will break and it'll just be a different thing. And then it's like, okay, well, what commit do I go back to? Oh, this commit was broken. Blah, blah, blah. This one seems to work, and if I remove this thing and comment it out it seems to be fine so this is yes this is what it was six months ago but really wasn't so um the video is on some level an exact representation of what it was because it really was running and it really is a recording of it so maybe like uh uh like a this is stupid but like a commentary like a commentary over a previous thing so future smart Yazid Eden Joseph can look at current Yazid Eden Joseph's content and be like, mm, yeah, this is before we had 3D anti-aliasing bit mapping or whatever. It's like, yeah, wow, we were stupid. We didn't even know the circles were polygons. Yeah, 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 or whatever. <laughs> the director's cut of patch notes. Yeah, well, not even patch notes, but like the developer updates specifically. It's because yeah. like, oh, yeah. Here's Joseph clicking through the dashboard for 14 minutes. What an embarrassing piece of content this is. Let's laugh at it, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> we should just do that. <laughs> That's it. That's a down the line thing, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Not anytime That's soon. Because we're, we're still in that stupid phase. Yeah. It'd be like us just making fun of ourselves right now. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, other than that, uh, I'm watching The Great British Bake Off. Uh, and falling asleep to it. It's great content to fall asleep to. I is that the like it. Is that the one where it's like super chill and everybody is always cal- like super calm even when they're everything's on fire? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, a good one. oh no, I burnt my toffee. And you're just like, <laughs> oh no, they burnt their toffee. How are they going to finish? But then they finish anyway. And they're just like, yeah. And then they go to taste test it. And they're like, mm, your toffee's a little undercooked. She's like, yeah, I didn't cook it because it was burnt the first time. Also, one of the I'm on season. I'm, they call them collections, not seasons. So I'm on collection yeah. one still, and there's a guy from Belfast. I have no idea what that man says when he speaks at all. He's talking, and I'm just like, mm, whatever this dude's saying is what he's saying. Yeah. It's, it's like. I always thought of myself like I understood what British people were saying because my family is from South Africa and they have a little bit of that accent. It's not the case at all. I understand New Zealanders 100%. 
I probably understand Australians a little bit better. People from Belfast, Scotland, and England, I have no idea. And I haven't heard anyone from, like, Dublin, so I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm confused. And that's why I fall asleep to it. It's great. It's like bad, it's like white noise, but with people instead of... <laughs> Is it racist that's... to call it white noise? <laughs> it's fine. Uh... <laughs> Britain is a multicultural whatever. Uh, anyway, whatever. The Speaking of shows that are not like American, I guess we watched Hell's Kitchen this past mm-hmm. week and the editing in that show is hilarious because it's the opposite of the British Baking Show. British Baking Show is like, this person is clearly very stressed out. They're like, they just burnt their thing and there's five minutes left and they're going to fail this challenge. And everybody is cool. Even the chubby guy with the suit and the spiky hair or whatever. He's like the dick, but he's still cool. You know? I'm guy fear you right now. No, I'm talking about the British <laughs> one. Isn't there a, the chubster in the British show? You are on an entirely different collection than I am. I'm in collection one. It's Mary Berry and Steve Hollywood or something like that. Dude? It is this dude, up. but I don't know if he has spiky hair. And I don't think he's really that chubby. Steve Hollywood. I found Hollywood Steve on Twitter. I don't think that's the name of the guy. I think we're talking about the same guy. Okay. Anyway, he's got cheeks. Anyway, um, Hell's Kitchen is edited in a hilarious way because it's like, okay, clearly you can see this guy said this to this guy. This guy put his hands on his hips and then Gordon Ramsay shook his head. What they did was they like cut just before and the guy like puts his arm up like this because he's going to like grab a towel or something but they edit it so he looks like he's gonna like punch the guy in the face and then it's like zoom in on his face and then a cut to the guy with his hand up on his arm and then it's just ramsey and it's just like after the commercials look at what happens with brian starting shit in the kitchen you're just like okay i have to watch this obvious fist fight that's gonna go down but then they play what actually happened and it's a second of just simple movement you're like okay everything that this i watch is a lie but I'll still keep doing it because it makes me happy in the moment, you know? It's just so different from the, the British stuff. Or even like uh, UK uh, uh, Kitchen Nightmares, the way that that one is edited compared to the US one. That is kind of funny. I didn't think about that. But like even like Iron Chef and... What was the other one? Like all American cooking shows are all like way more aggressive about how stressful it can be, I've noticed. I think a lot of that is the editing. They'll add the music, they'll add the cuts, and they're fast. Like, it's just like, like if you count how many frames you see in five seconds of a commercial transition for Hell's Kitchen, it's like hundreds. It's crazy. There's just like flash of man's face. Now it's on fire. Flash of knife. It's cutting the chicken. You're just like, okay, it's just going all over the place to try to convey stress. Mm -hmm. And it does. It's just, it's weird how it works. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember the last time I've seen an episode of Hell's Kitchen to compare it to. It's still very good. I mean, I would watch that show specifically for all the ridiculous stuff Gordon Ramsay says. Like, in that show, he calls somebody a donkey. I think he holds up two slices of bread to somebody's face and tells them that they're an idiot sandwich or something like that. Like, just such (laughs) mean things that really make me laugh. (laughs) It's, It's really great. He seems like the nicest guy too, which is so funny. I really actually, I think think it's the opposite. I think he's super chill unless he's cooking and then he's like weirdly aggressive. Sonobi was saying, I was just going to say Sonobi was was saying because he probably really cares about food and that's like his thing that he cares about when people don't do it right. He actually cares. Mm -hmm. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I saw that he does like a, a cooking show with kids and he's like super nice on that show. Yeah. I would be terrified if I was a kid. Like, if I was a parent, I'd be like, okay, let's see about a little about this, like, guy who's going to be judging us. I'd watch, like, Cooking Nightmares. I'd be like, this man's going to kill my kid. And then, like, <laughs> your kid shows up, makes mashed potatoes poorly, and is like, that's okay. You're still learning. Yeah. It's just true. Adult messes up. He's like, I'll kill you myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're a donkey. Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> Well, a lot of the time it's in the context of like, I'm a professional chef and here I am trying to prove myself to you, another, prof- like a real professional chef. And I, like one person in the previous episode of Hell's Kitchen undercooked the potatoes. 
Like, how do you do that as a professional chef, you know? And it's like, he kind of flipped out on this poor girl. On one hand, yes, like, you see it's stressful. But on the other hand, you know, you got to realize what you're doing. It's like, you messed up potato. It's like, in the time it mattered the most. So anyway, that, and then uh, Kitchen Nightmares. It's like, you own this restaurant, and you're serving people, like, actual garbage. Like, you're the worst. Like, I get it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, so yeah, okay. I've, I think I've unraveled my previous conundrum about this dog owner secret dog owner society. It's not that there's a society; it's that you see the same people twice a day, <laughs> every day for long periods of time. So eventually, they just think of you as like somebody that they know because they've seen you walking your dog, also, and so yeah. they greet you and they talk to you a little bit. Which is fine. It's just, I feel a little bit let down now that I've pieced it all together. And it hit me when I saw the same lady walking the same two Pomeranians every day for like a month. And now, and now I'm like putting it all together. I'm like, I've seen her like a lot. I don't know anything about her besides that she walks Pomeranians the same time I do. But we say hello to each other and like chit chat a little bit. That sounds like the scene in SpongeBob where Squidward moves to the like squid t- town and everybody does the same thing every day. Yeah, sounds kind of is a little bit like that. Yeah, <laughs> like at the adoption place, they give you this paper that's like how to help get your dog acclimatized to your life, and the whole thing is basically like set a routine. What they don't tell you is that, like, you don't just get to set the routine. To some extent, like, the dog is actually the one that sets your routine. And then you fit the rest of your life into, like, the other time slots. So it'll be like, what time does your dog need to go to the bathroom in the morning? That's the first walk in the morning. So, like, for me, 7 a.m., she needs to go to the bathroom, which means that I will wake up and take her on a walk at 7 a.m. every day. So, like, for the rest of my life, basically, 7 a.m. wake-ups to take her on a walk to do her business. But other people have the same problem because I guess dogs are kind of like that. So a lot of people in this neighborhood also have to take their dog on a walk at 7 a.m. So I just see them consistently. See, to me, complaining about waking up at 7 a.m., I'm like, that just sounds like waking up. Uh, you know? I'm fine with it during the week. Although that is like an hour earlier, like an hour and a half earlier than I normally <laughs> would. But like... <laughs> During the weekend, I'm used to waking up at like 1 p.m. And so waking up at 7 a.m. versus 1 p.m. is a huge difference in terms maybe, of time. Maybe don't wake up at 1 p.m. But when you go to sleep at like 4 a.m. Maybe you don't go to bed at like 4 a.m. Well, I can't anymore. I go to sleep at 11 p.m. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. I'm like a, not like an old person, like a highly regimented soul. Yeah. It's like 7 a.m. wake up 11 p.m. bedtime every day. Yeah. Dinner and lunch, breakfast, those are all pretty much time set too, because that's also around when she wants to play or something. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. Yeah. It's like uh, what Mr. Clifford used to tell us about how aliens would think that we praise the clock because of uh, the way that we oh all just God. like constantly look towards it. Yeah, I forgot about that actually. That's funny. Yeah. The funnier thing is that I have no analog clock in my house except for my watch, it's just all digital. So it is a little bit different. When we were, this is kind of related. We were in San Ramon. There was this, uh, like the whole Bay Area makes me mad because they like make everything techy when it doesn't have to be. So there's a clock in the, in the middle of the town, like near their city buildings or whatever. And it's like an analog clock that has an, a digital reading, but it also has like the weather and like all these other kind of, it's like, it's like the iPhone widgets Thing of like everything around your weather and all the other like <laughs> visual things and they tried to make an iphone on a fucking building and it's absurd looking and it really looks awful and you can't tell what time it is i i didn't know how to tell the time on their clock there were like nine different things with numbers do you remember I mr just, madden's time teller thingy mr who mr madden and oh his um it was a it was a was it a binary clock was it something else no it was like just light up squares and you had to figure out what those squares represented. What was the actual system? I have no I, remember... I don't remember. I just remember it was light up squares, but there was like four sets of squares. But they don't represent the numbers like you think that they do. That that's just a that's just an impractical 
thing. Like, at a certain point, a clock is there for use. Yeah. Not for, like, looks, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. At a certain point. I'm not saying that, a, like, you can't have a nice watch, for example. It just... You have to be able to tell the time. Otherwise, what are you doing? Anyway, uh, uh, my one last thing I had for What's Up is that I, I have a dash cam. So I want to figure out how to process my 26 hours of driving footage and put it into a, like, speed it up so it's a two minute video. So you can just see the drive from the northern part of the US to the southern part of the US, basically on the West Coast. That's what it is. Mm. So I think it'd be kind of an interesting thing because uh, I have all that recorded. Also, all the conversations that me and Sylvia had recorded over the, that time, but I'm not going to put that anywhere. So uh... You should speed that up too. <laughs> <laughs> whenever you compress the video and compress the audio now too it's just Mach 10 you and Sonovia speaking it's just as fast as you can you wouldn't be able to hear a single thing like if you wanted to cut it down I was actually thinking about what the time because I, I had a lot of time to think I was just driving by the way California California is too big they had to break that state up it's too big um, but I was just thinking words in California I've heard I don't care dude California sucks that state is is it's it's like starting from the north, you go south, and it's farms that are growing weed. It seems like because that whole state smells like weed, and then you hit the Bay Area, and it's the Bay Area, you know, for all the good and bad things there. It's very small, and then you go, and it's just desert, and then you hit a smell of manure, and that's how you know you're close to L.A. And then a hundred, no joke, 100 miles of manure smell. 100 miles. The sign said 102 miles to LA and it started to smell like manure and that didn't stop until after we hit LA. So 100 miles of just poop smell. And then you're in LA, which is basically permanent poop smell. And then you're, you're like in the southern part of California that's just like wasteland, except for San Diego. And then that's the state. Their, their GDP is more than, like, most countries, and th- everything is concentrated into these two little areas, and this is, like, I'm not saying farms are underutilization. I'm saying there is a lot that could be done with the states that is not currently being done. <laughs> That's funny. I actually have never driven into Northern California at all. I've never been more north than... San Francisco. Yeah. So I don't, I think I've only seen like half of California. <laughs> That's what you would think. But San Francisco, there's like Napa and like the, the northern, <coughs> excuse me, the North Bay Area, whatever, like Vallejo and go to where E40 is from. But north of that, it's just, it's just, there's a, there's a, st- a, a small town called Weed, Weed, California. So as you leave, it's like right on the northern border. As you're going into Oregon or coming into California from Oregon, there's all these signs who are like, visit the weed store. I heart weed. It's like the most dumb, like touristy garbage, $5 whatever stuff. And that's like all I can remember from the entire northern half of California (laughs) is Um, weed, California. I mean, isn't it like the Sequoia forests and stuff like that i'm sure if you're an outdoorsy person you care a lot but as a person (laughs) driving on i-5 for the entire state it's just it's crazy how seemingly empty that state is considering how big population is and how big it is Mm -hmm. crazy um that is pretty cool though i would like to see your sped up video i would also like to have it uh you send me a version where the audio is sped up just so I can experience what it's like. I, I really... Because I think I, it's like, I, really like, like two possibilities. Either there's long periods where you and Snowbia don't talk, so there's just long periods of complete silence, or there is never silence and you and Snowbia were just talking for like 26 hours straight. I don't... I, I, don't, I think... That's what I was going to say before. I don't know how fast I can reasonably make it. Because if I take 26 hours and say that 25 is driving, 25 hours to a minute, uh, what's the math on that? Like one second of, of real time is how many seconds in a video? I don't know. 
Okay, let's say I wanted to make a... <laughs> you're asking the wrong person. You, you're gonna, you have to take your number of hours, multiply by 60, multiply by 60 again, and then that's the number of seconds. And then your compression is from that point. Let's say I want to make it a minute long video. Let's say for simplicity, it's 20 hours long, the video. Actually, to make it even simpler, 30 hours long. It's a 30 hour video. I want to make it a minute. That means that one hour of real life is two seconds of a video, which means that half of a second is what, 15 minutes? Yes. So then in half of a second, think of like what you can actually start to like hear from human voice. You're not gonna, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be like noise. Oh, that's what I mean, yeah, that's what I want. I wanna just, I wanna know if how much of it was you two talking and how much of it was you two in just complete silence driving. A lot of it, she was asleep, and I was, like, seeing <laughs> on the radio. It's just a period where it's no one speaking but the radio. Well, no, because even I sing to the radio, because I, I, oh. get, I get so tired, you got to do something. So I'm talking at least the entire time, you know, so you'll have something there. This to... man spoke for 26 hours, gets home, immediately does a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... It's... Last uh, last trip when we were going up to Seattle, there was like an hour left. And we were both so exhausted, and Zenobia just started to, to keep us both awake. She started telling me the entire plot of uh, Rush Hour one, two, and three. Like she's she's so good at her. Uh, like she she have you ever seen Drunk History? Yes. She basically does that, but sober, and she's hilarious. And uh, she did that for all three Rush Hours, which took an hour. <laughs> An hour of Sonovia describing Rush Hour. There's like not was, that much going on in Rush Hour. She, she remembers so much detail about things. She'll like start at the beginning of the movie and she'll even like tell you the details that come into play later. She'll like tell you the story from the beginning. It's amazing. I and then honestly anyways, want to hear her do that now. That's, that's yeah, pretty cool. I recommend it. You should ask her to, to describe any of her favorite movies. Any of them. Rush Hour is one of them. But another one, because we were trying to do the same thing, with an hour left to, to Tucson today, we did. A, I asked her to do Corky Romano, which I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's a very goofy mobster comedy movie. So, uh, did a great job. Anyway, Sonovia's the best. Her trip was fine. I'm tired. And that's what's up. I want one more thing before we move on. I wonder how long it would take Sonovia to describe The Godfather. Because that movie's already like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> what's her compression rate <laughs> if she compressed <laughs> three rush hour movies which is like six hours into an hour will the godfather become like two hours or what i think she has to like the movie she doesn't she's not a huge fan of the godfather really because she's seen these movies so many times she has them like in her brain oh, okay so but if you ask her about to, about a movie that she doesn't care about she'll just be like that. <laughs> I also did mine. She asked me to do one, so I did one for Gran Torino, and it wasn't nearly as good as hers, but she liked it. So that's our that's becoming our tradition. Is on long road trips at the very end, just start describing something in detail that doesn't need detail. Did you tell her all the times that Clint Eastwood said racist stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Grant Dino is a really good movie, but Glenn Eastwood does say some stuff that is not okay to have someone say if you're not of that's, that culture. That's, that's the point, though. It is the point. I'm just letting people know. Like, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like that, like, doesn't like to hear that, like, it, it is a lot. A lot taken. It definitely blew me away the first, like, five minutes of that movie, some of the stuff he says. It Old man. So aggressive. Yeah. Whatever. It's a good. That's a good movie. I couldn't remember why the tension happens. Like you know how there's the there's like the kid and his older cousins like a total jerk and yeah, the whole end happens. I forget exactly what got to that point, so I kind of freestyled that yeah, part of it. They went after his sister. That's what it was. The the quiet weirdo girl. I thought she was the normal one. They're all bad actors. I think that's the thing. I don't know who's weird. They're all weird. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, probably. I, I'm not an actor myself, so I don't know how to judge it, but I imagine that they weren't the best actors. It's not well, like Leonardo DiCaprio was out here 
wearing an Asian person. The, uh, I think it's see... Vietnamese or something. Yeah, I think they are. The like Clint Eastwood is Clint Eastwood, then just dude pretending to be scared, and he's like clearly not doing it well. You know, it's like it's very different. Anyway, the movie's great, but the acting is it's not great. Yeah. Ready to move on to song of the week? Yes, song of the week. All right. So listen, I have a lot to go through. So I'm going to start yeah. off not with my song of the week. I'm going to start off with some of the songs you recommended from last week. So Righteous by Juice World was really good. I liked it. I listened to it and I added it to my Spotify playlist and I was like, I like this song a lot. Nice. Um, Pay 1993, I don't like any of that. And then No Stylist, I was like, I don't like this either. So, so do you think there were any similarities between No Stylist and Pay 1993? I'm going to be honest, I listened to probably the first two minutes of no stylist and i was like this is definitely not for me that no was stylist. after i listened to pay 1993 though well most no stylist isn't even complete it's a leak the whole second verse is empty there's no it's just beat oh you so heard, I, I left you heard the when, first verse. Yeah. <laughs> i listened to the whole song without knowing it um yeah. i i don't know if i really could say that there's a lot of similarities between the two of them maybe like stylistically yeah some of the word choice probably um, but I wasn't did, really listening to it for that. Did you hit the Playboy Cardi part in Pain 1993? Yeah, I was, in that, I was in that whole song, yeah. The weird part at the end. The Rex, are you my Yeah. That part is like, the part that everybody is like, what the hell? Do you... Do you get anything... I guess I'm asking because I really like No Stylist. And he does the... You can damn it, you can't. Like, he does that weird, like... And he does that more on... Pay 1993, but I really don't like it on Pay 1993. So I guess I'm asking if to you those two sounds are one is like an evolution of the other, or if they're just different. You know, I think that the rest of the songs have some different pieces going on, so it fits better probably in No Stylist than in 1993. Mm. If that makes sense, like the beat probably fits better to it, and probably yeah. a little bit of like what the lead into it was. Because if I remember right, the transition into it in Pay 1993 is like, there is none. It's just like, it's like going, going, and then it's just like, and you're just like trying to be like, all right, okay. But then in like, no stylus, I think there is a little bit of a lead in, if I remember right. Yeah. But it, it kind of just goes, it's like the energy starts high and it, keep, it stays high. Whereas that one, the other song is a Drake song and then Playboy Cardi kind of ruins it. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was, I guess, just curious to see what you thought of that. I'm, I'm glad you like Juice World. I'm not surprised that you didn't like Playboy Cardi. No, I didn't like. I like Juice World. I actually never heard of Juice World, and in my notes to myself, I spelled it Juice World with an O, but it's actually Juice World with no O. No O on that. Yeah. I mean, no one can really blame you for spelling World correctly, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I liked it a lot. I think that that was probably my. The best rap song I've heard this year. Of all the songs that you've sent me, I think that one's my favorite one. I'm gonna go through and try to find some some stuff that you would like because "Righteous" is not a bad song, but that is shocking. But... I don't know. I have a very like oddly weird taste, I guess maybe for hip hop because some of my other favorite hip hop songs are like "Contradictions Maze" by Odyssey. So like. I'm definitely like not into probably what you're into. Yeah, but if you're if you're into a Juice World song, that's like exactly the kind of stuff I'm into. Oh, okay. I'll send you a lot more Juice World. I have so much Juice World in my playlist. Do it. I'll listen to it. Um, but my song of the week is actually "Run for Your Life" with Mako, Rat City, and Nat Dunn. Tell me about. Tell me about this. I mean, it's just like, it's a little bit like an older school mute song for me. So it's like, basically it's like an EDM track a little bit. Um, definitely like something you would, I would imagine people would be more comfortable with hearing it on the radio. If that mm. makes sense. Like it definitely feels like a radio hit song that you'd see played in like a club or something like that. Which makes sense. Cause like Mako, I think is a pretty, happening was a pretty happening dj maybe still is i don't really know 
What do you think the market for that kind of music is at the moment? People aren't going out to clubs. I don't think there is one. I know, like, okay, so, like, I know a little bit. So, like, Robin Schultz did uh, the European League of Legends Championship, their final. He actually DJed live for them um, by stream because they don't have anything else going on. That was pretty sick. So I think, that, like, they're just trying to find, like, streaming gigs here and there where they can. I think a lot of them are actually just streaming their songs, too, them DJing live. Interesting. I think there's like a real skill set to be able to DJ live, and I imagine that the top end DJs really don't want to lose that skill because it's probably really difficult to like keep up. Yeah, I'm sure. It's interesting to see how people like musicians have adapted to this whole thing. Like uh, rappers specifically have been doing a lot of interesting stuff, like shows. I don't know if you know who Sway, Sway Lee is, but he did like a concert on Instagram Live. Uh, and then other people have been doing like competitions kind of like that, but they're not live DJ sets. They're, um, it's more of like go hit for hit. So like Scott mm-hmm. Storch is this producer who made basically like every hit on the radio from 2004 to 2008. And then Manny Fresh is another huge popular producer. And they did a video on Instagram live where they just went back and it's like, I made this song. Remember this absolute classic? Yes. I made this song. Remember this? And it's just like kind of a fun back and forth. And it's crazy to see how fast everybody who does that kind of stuff adapted to everything. And it's like, yeah, Instagram. Like, I'll make an event flyer for my Instagram live. It's like, it's just like a different thing. But mm-hmm. people are like going for it, which I really like. Yeah, it is kind of cool. I mean, I've never really like followed the like live concert scene because I've never been to a concert. So I was never. You've really, like, never been to a concert? No. I feel like this has to have come up before in our lives. How have you never been to a concert and we've never talked about it? Uh, I think we have talked about it because there was a concert that I really wanted to go to, but no one else listened to the artist and I wasn't going to go alone. So I just never went. Cause we definitely talked about this because I was telling you like how weird I would feel about being alone at a concert. And you're like, yeah, it is a little bit odd. Okay, then I remember the conversation. But I guess it's just wild to me that that's still true, that you've never been to a concert. I mean... <laughs> It's, I feel like it's easier to believe it now because like there are no concerts, but there are like some artists that I would really love to see live. Like, really you pick, you pick one. You can go to one concert. What do you, what are you going to? Florence the Machine. Okay. Absolutely. I heard her. I heard she's just like great live, and I like a lot of what she does, and I think it'd be pretty cool. But I mean, there's like a bunch of people that I would like to see as well, but she's probably number one right now. Does she... It's two people, right? Florence the Machine? Yeah, Florence is the singer and the Machine is uh, the drummer. I guess I'm... I wonder if... if uh, In like a year from now, if people are going to go back to normal concerts. Like when we were in California, there was a billboard. Pitbull, come in July 11th. You're like, really? Like that date is far enough in the future where you think that maybe someone could say yes to that? But like... Really? A Pitbull concert? Not I that really, it's against Pitbull. I think there's going to be like three sets of people. I think there's going to be the set of people that like the moment they legally can go out and do stuff, they're going to. Then there's going to be those like the cautious people who are like, they'll wait a little bit and then like they'll slowly start to re-add things until they get back to normal. And then there's going to be the shut-ins and they're going to be like, I'm never going out again. <laughs> but the shut-ins weren't going to a Pitbull concert, I think, in the first place. I think that the shut-in group grew over the self-quarantine. I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe, I think some people who used to go to Pitbull concerts are now not going to go to Pitbull concerts. I would go to a Pitbull concert. Maybe not right now. I guess I'm exactly in that group. So, yeah, you're right. <laughs> there, there we go, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Three sets of people, and that's my theory. Yeah. I have no way of proving this or disproving it, so I'm going to just say it's correct 100%. Math, math and science expert Yazid over here giving us the, the scoop. That's right. I'm a big idiot. Um, what's your <laughs> song of the week, though, man? Uh, my song of the week. First, your song of the week last week was... Let me pull it up on my Spotify. I don't it was... remember either. Oh, it was a song featuring a person that was not the main person. Too Soon featuring Maddie Noise by Vanek. Yes. 
I listened to the wrong version of that song and it was some weird techno remix and I was like, huh, this beat and this singing seem very off. And then I realized it was a remix. So <laughs> played the regular version after that and it was much better. I actually liked it quite a bit. <laughs> So yeah, try the non-dubstep version of that song for everybody at home, and it'll be pretty good. It's like singing. When the lady started singing, I started laughing, because, of course, the song opens with the lady singing softly, because it's easy. But uh, <laughs> within like a minute, it actually kind of picked up. So it was pretty nice. It was fun. Yeah, it's, um, a, little, it's a, little, a little bop. Yeah, quite, quite a bop. Uh, my song of the week is Nav making his second appearance uh, on Home Games. My specifically patch notes song of the week with Saint Laurent, but there's like five T's. He has like five T's on the end of the. I don't know I why you spelled. That's a typo or not actually. Yeah, I fell asleep on the keyboard. He's typed it like that. It's it's, it's that. But uh, there's this thing. So very specific part. It's a song by Nav. He's talking about something. He talks about like very basic things for the most part. But the the way that his music sounds is very nice. It has like a like he like locks in the vibe heavy and he keeps it there. You know, he it like stays. Yes, <laughs> I'm really into that. I like the vibe. Um, there is in the in the hook for Saint Laurent, he says he says a line and the there's a pitch shift. So every word, the voice gets like deeper. So and it just like changes in the hook, and it and it creates this weird like meta music. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's dude, like... I listen to stuff like that all the time. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! And it's like it's it's very simple. I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's like uh, uh, super complicated. It's just the way that that song sounds is incredible, and I really enjoy listening to it. He's got other stuff. He has a new album that just came out this past week called Good Intentions. His previous album was called Bad Habits. So, Bad Habits, mm. Good Intentions. So, uh, I don't know. Nav is a meme, uh, a huge meme on the internet because he's hilarious. He has mm. a line about getting, uh, he has a line about getting head outside of a Toys R Us. And so people will reference that and copy fossils all the time about Nav, uh, memes about Nav. All this stuff about Nav. Uh, he calls himself Brown Boy because he's Indian. So, and he that he's the first Brown Boy to get it popping. So people will just casually mention the Brown Boys, the Goat, or whatever. Like all these dumb memes, and it's hilarious because he's kind of like a weird, soft-spoken, small little man. But his music's good. He doesn't seem like a jerk. He just seems like a guy who just gets made fun of a lot. So I don't know. He seems fine. He's the guy of the. <laughs> Rap, yeah, rap game guy Fieri. He's just doing his best. He's not a bad guy. Uh, someone on Reddit posted like Guy Fieri is actually like a really nice person. Like, yeah. did he raise like twenty million dollars for the for like restaurant worker relief or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And after his sister passed away, apparently he like he became a person who can marry people. I don't remember what that word is. Like an officiant, and he married like a hundred and one. Um, same sex couples, like that's yeah. wild, dude. Like I didn't know that. I thought he was just the mayor of Flavor Town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he's also a pretty okay guy. Have you ever seen his Hot Ones episode? Yeah, I have actually. When, when when Sean Evans asks him about what he's signing, like a like a Michelinas or whatever the frozen dinner thing, and he's like throwing it out, it's like. It's so funny to me that that really happened. Guy Fieri just doesn't seem like he really, uh, like he's self-aware, but he's totally not. You know what I mean? Well, he asked him in that interview of like, do you get the like internet meme culture around you? And he's like, no, I don't get it. Like, I'm just me, man. I don't understand it. But like me watching, I'm like, if this is really you 100%, I have some real questions for you, man. I have some like real, like, how did you get like this? I, Where did you just... When did you stop caring about what other people thought? Because I feel like his personality had to have developed to this point, And then he was like, this is good. This is where I'm stopping, like, sticking with the times. And yeah. that it just never moved past that. It's like, what, what caused that? Was it kids? 
Was it getting married? Was it become I'm, the mayor of Flav- the mayor of Flavor Town? I'm think? sure he is so like this. Once people started making fun of him, he's like, okay, like my life is so good. I'm Guy Fieri. I travel around the world and I eat at diners and then I like put my fingers in someone's food while they're cooking. You know, like, oh, that's gangster. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what can you say that could hurt Guy Fieri? Yeah. That he's loud, you know. Like he, that dude's winning everything. He seems yeah. great. Whatever, good for Guy Fieri. Hell yeah! Shout out to Guy Fieri. Honestly, the new title of this episode is "Good for Guy Fieri." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, there, you go. there we go. That'll increase our listens. All those. uh People are thirsty for Guy Fieri content right now. <laughs> Always, really. They had that show to replace him. What's the idea of him being thirsty for Guy Fieri content right now? Like, that's very funny. <laughs> there was the show where it was like to replace Guy Fieri. Are you just picking stuff off your tongue on camera? <laughs> no. I I licked my mustache and I had mustache hair on my tongue. I had to get it off because it it irritates me to have hair on my mouth. Anyway. All right, Yazid. Uh, right. Keep just like touching your tongue. It's fine. <laughs> Sticking your entire tongue out of your mouth and touching it. Uh, there was a show to replace, or not replace, yeah. explicitly replace, but Guy Fieri. Mm-hmm. And it was like, Guy Fieri is going to host the show and he's like, yeah, you know, here's the thing. Here's the job. You're going to walk into this restaurant. You're not going to know anything about it. And you're going to basically disturb these people. Start asking questions. Start telling the camera things about what's going on. You've never been in here before. You're just going to walk in and do it. And that was like the game show. And they would have people and talking about like what their theme is. One guy was stews, soups, and chilies. Other guys like barbecue and stuff. And there were two winners. They got their own like pilots. And it's like Guy Fieri, like their protégés or whatever, you know, like putting them up because someone has to do this show that's not Guy Fieri. He's been doing it for like 20 years. He's probably exhausted. And then they both got canceled within like four episodes and Guy Fieri's still doing it. He's like, he tried. They, I'm sure they put so much time and money into trying the replacement, but no one wants anything except Guy Fieri. I think I've never seen a show where they try to get like a like do a show to replace the current host has ever worked out because it makes you realize how good the current host is and how not good yet the like the new host will be yeah and i think because like i think a more interesting one would be to like have them do a pilot episode and then show you the guy fieri pilot episode and then be like do you see now like we know, like, they could be better than Guy Fieri because their pilot's better. So they, like, already have, like, already, like, a layer of polish to it. Because, like, Guy Fieri's been doing it for 20 years. There's no way a new person is going to be as good as Guy Fieri. He's been That's doing it true. for 20 years. That's a good point. It's it's hard to match that man's charisma. He just doesn't, like you said, he doesn't care. Like, I'm sure he really does care, but he seems to not at all. And he must have that going on, whatever, to just be like, I'm so rich. Look, look at my hair, dude. I did this on purpose for you, you know? <laughs> and the flaming Hawaiian t-shirts and yeah. all the rest of it. Yeah. That dude that dude really is cool. He is. Like, yeah, he seems fun. Um, do you have anything else for Song of the Week? I don't. Do you have anything Listen. else for the podcast? Uh, nope. Homegames.io. Listen to St. Laurent by Nav. It's a great song. Please do listen to the podcast and Saint Laurent with a bunch of teas by Nav. Who's with a bunch of teas. The brown guy who's popping or something. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? He's the first brown boy to get it popping. He's the first brown boy to get it popping. There we go. All right. <laughs> That's a good byline also, but. Well, it's like, like yours. Very and brown are the words that best describe me. That's always <laughs> my favorite for you. <laughs> If I ever became a rap man, that would be in a song for sure. <laughs> Your name could just be very brown. Kind of meta. Hmm. What would your rap name be? Find out next week on Patch Notes.
the Home Games podcast. Okay, good. I thought you were really going to put me on the spot right now. I was like, I have no idea what my revenue would be. No, right. we have to figure it out. Okay. All right. You have to do it too. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll Actually, you- my rap name would be Papa Bean. P O P P A Bean. I'll tell you why next week on Patch Notes, the Home Games podcast. Um, Thanks for listening. I was a little bit troubled that you had that on online. I was actually thinking about it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about it later. It was driving and was like, what would my rap name be? <laughs> Six hours of driving and it's just like, what would a good rap name for me be? <laughs> I can't do it. I was thinking about it. I don't know. It's like hopped up on caffeine. His fiance is telling him the plot to Finding Nemo. And he's just sitting there thinking about his rat name. She was asleep at the time. There wasn't a lot going on. I can't handle this mental image. Oh my god. <laughs> out next to you you're listening to the radio like what would be a good rap name yes that really is what happens <laughs> I'm glad I can bring joy I to your day I don't know if anyone else is going to find it as funny as I am but it's like it's funny because I 100% believe you <laughs> yes I really did this I know <laughs> I know, but if I didn't know you, I would 100% believe that you that you did this. But I'm like, you, I imagine like you put in like a couple hours of thought into it. Like this wasn't a snap decision. You probably I've been went thinking through like about this for five. months. <laughs> I'll tell you why next week, but that really is. I really have been thinking about this off and on for a very long time. Oh my god, this is just this is the best way to end the podcast, I think. I don't think I should say anything after that. Check out my future SoundCloud, Papa B. <laughs> Hell yeah. Alright, everyone. Check us out next week. Homegames.io. Uh, Homegames.io. Leave us the tweet or not. It's your call. Okay, but please do, honestly. I'd like it. Um, but alright. See you later. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.